Well, welcome to the video about the Xbox Series X and Series S on this LG GP850. And if you watched my review on this GP850, you'll know that I told you there were some awesome features that this thing offers that aren't offered in previous generations. So I wanna get into that. But before we do, I'm gonna go through a little bit of gameplay and uh, we're gonna break this down and see how well it actually performs. And if it's a monitor you should be looking at right now when it comes to 1440p and 120 hertz capable. So I was able to put this GP850 to the test. I mean, I've been using it for at least the past week. I tested it out on PC and here we are with console gaming and uh, it stacks up pretty dang well. First I plugged in that Series S and uh, the performance wasn't bad. Of course, you know, you are limited to 1440p and titles that do 120 hertz, which you know, ultimately leads me to Warzone. And I'll be honest, 1440p on Warzone really isn't the best. The fidelity is subpar. And if you want to play in 1080 or 4K, that's definitely a viable option. But uh, I would say this may not be the best monitor for you if you don't like fidelity issues. That being said, performance wise, the Series S actually did really well. And it was fairly comparable to the Series X. My gameplay on the Series S through Warzone was very smooth. I wasn't capping out at 120 frames per second all the time, uh, but it was performing along what I would expect. And switching over to the Series X wasn't a massive day and night difference. It was a noticeable gain and increase in frames per second, but the fidelity in Warzone was identical. I mean, maybe some objects had a little more texture and resolution to them, but that's about it. It wasn't a night and day difference, like I said before. So I've already done a playthrough of this Battle of Verdansk, and it does basically this simple little playthrough and allows you to defeat this train and, and go after the different turrets on the train, and it's kind of lame. It's pretty lame. I get it. They're getting you interacted into the game to show you a preview of the new Call of Duty Vanguard. The preview was good. Um, I do want to comment, though, on something that happened in this. Um, so as I'm playing through Warzone, you notice that it has that haziness over the display and uh, the resolution, the fidelity, the color, the contrast are all very muddled. It's not that great. I mean, I can make out the game and I can play, but it's not that satisfying. However, there's all these cutscenes, these pre-planned cutscenes that are just rendered video shoved in there for you to watch. And it's kind of funny and it, it speaks to the true issue with Warzone as a game for Xbox Series X and S on 1440p. It was showing those rendered clips in full fidelity and it looked really good. And the sneak peek of Vanguard was actually just as good. And it's kind of like Cold War where, you know, if you use this Xbox with the right monitor, you're going to get great fidelity but it's not going to be on every single game. So I decided to fire up some Cold War because at least in Cold War, for whatever reason, Call of Duty supports more for 1440p than Warzone. As you notice in Warzone, it has that hazy kind of filter to it. I'm not a huge fan. I think that's uh, just kind of a waste for 1440p players out there. And you might want to look at 1080 or 4K options. But in Cold War, I was impressed. The fidelity was much better. Some of the opening scenes for season five and of course the new launch in Verdansk is phenomenal. I mean, it looks great. It's not nearly as good as the RTX card that I have, uh, but you're kind of comparing $1,500 versus 500 over here. So for $500, again, it was impressive. The fidelity was great. The color was on point. The contrast was great. I played a few rounds through. The motion seemed really well, but it has its usual hangups. You know, for console, one of the biggest hangups is input lag. And uh, with the controller and the wireless connection to the Series X, it's a noticeable input lag. It's not as bad as I'm, I'm making it out to be. 
honestly, I play with the controller most of the time on PC. So if you're used to that, you're probably never gonna notice. But I can be a stickler sometimes and it is noticeable. Now that's not monitor specific. So getting into this monitor in calibration, full capability is allowed within the menu to calibrate. Black levels, contrast, brightness, all of that good stuff is allowed. And if you wanna set 4K or 1080, you can get HDR on this particular monitor. Now, something I didn't mention previously is the fact that this guy gets full VRR capability. And as you can see here, variable refresh rate is allowed. And uh, I'm pretty happy about that because if you are getting a lot of screen tearing and issues with motion, you're gonna notice, especially in Warzone, because uh, for whatever reason, it's a power hog, you're gonna notice that in game massively. You're gonna get big, big glitches, stutter, screen tear, and it's not gonna be very pleasant to play. And that's one of the upsides to this LG GP850. I believe the 83 also does it, but the 850 for sure allows variable refresh rate, allowing that uh, frames per second to go up and down with what your Xbox is able to produce at that moment. So it's a huge plus in my opinion. And when having that on in Cold War, it was as if I was playing on a low to mid-level PC and I was extremely happy considering, again, $499 for this particular Xbox and $499 for the monitor, it matches up fairly well. So I wanna be clear when it comes to the GP850 and it being a good companion for the Series X, it's not all bad, right? There are some definite benefits, but something that I need to point out to you guys is the fact that at 1440p with HDMI 2.0 and 120 hertz capability, you are unable to do 10-bit color depth. HDMI 2.0 does not have the bandwidth to support those three things simultaneously. So what that entails is when you get into games like Warzone, because a lot of the HD texture packs are HDR for the Xbox, you end up with a washed out kind of display. So what I have to do, you guys, in order to get HDR to function with variable refresh rate, 120 hertz capability, I actually have to drop it down to 1920 by 1080. And then my picture is looking great in uh, Warzone. But if I go back and I change that to uh, eight bit color depth, and 1440p 120 hertz there's no hd texture packs to be able to give me good color depth good color capability it looks hazy like it did in the video but that's exactly why i'm saying that another monitor might be better suited to you if you're looking to 1440p game at high refresh rates in call of duty warzone so I wanna start with the downsides on this particular monitor. And first and foremost, it's going to be price. At $499 regular retail value, it seems a little high for a monitor that only performs at about 50% of its true capability using the Series X. Now, normally I would recommend it because, hey, it's got a lot of room for growth, but honestly, there's better monitors out there for less of a cost. And uh, that's what I would tell you to get. Now that's just about the only downside to this. The monitor itself can actually well outperform this Xbox. So maybe it's a little bit of an overbuy if you're using a Series S or Series X. But if you happen to have it and you have a PC already and you're utilizing it for both, I can see it being a huge benefit because it has a lot of ins and outs. So getting to the pros of this particular monitor and why you should look at it if you have a Series X. Well reinforcing my last statement saying if you already have a pc and uh, you're utilizing it for dual purposes then absolutely it's a phenomenal monitor and uh, you're going to get the 1440p 120 hertz you can do 4k hdr you can do 1080p hdr 120 hertz keep in mind 4k is going to be 60 hertz not 120. you get variable refresh rate which is super nice and uh, performance wise it held up you know, screen tearing was very minimal because of that variable refresh rate and uh, color in certain games, accuracy, contrast, the way it performed, its calibration capability was extremely highly capable. I said that kind of weird, extremely capable in this setting. And for the Xbox Series X as a suitable match, 
if you're utilizing it for both PC and the Series X. Now, if you don't have a PC and you're just looking for the best monitor out there for you to utilize, I want you to check out a couple of videos on the channel. I'm about to be reviewing a, a different monitor, Gigabyte M28U, it's a 4K, HDMI 2.1, 144Hz monitor. And uh, that guy could actually be, wow, I just died. That guy could actually be a little bit of a better suited monitor for you if you have the Series X. It's a little more expensive, but could be better. I would also urge you to go check out the GP83B from LG. Similar monitor, similar specs, just less expensive. It's gonna give you all the same performance that we just talked about in today's video, but at a lesser cost. And I've even heard about it going on sale for about $400. So that's $100 savings there for a similar, actually the performance would be the same uh, on this Series X. Now I'm keeping it simple on this review because I did a full review of this monitor. And uh, at the end of the day, if you're interested in it, you can go check out that full review. I just wanted to get into the nitty gritty of how it performed with the Series S and Series X. And uh, it performs as expected and gives you VRR. That's really all I have to say. It's expensive and you could probably buy something less expensive and get the same level of performance. So that's me wrapping it up for you guys. I know it's short and sweet, very simple, but if you have any questions, put it down below in the comments. I'll be happy to answer. And we have a great group on Facebook called Only Nerds Buy Accessory. So if you have long form questions or you want to debate and talk about things, you can do it there on Facebook. And as always, you guys, I ask you to subscribe because that's how we keep this channel going. So I appreciate you guys that have. Thanks for watching the video and I'll catch you in the next one.